PYFL All-Star Youth Football is presented by Nationwide Insurance. Contact your local agent, David Noma, at 661-254-1714. That's 661-254-1714. Nationwide is on your side. Well, you're listening and watching the PYFL here on the JD Media Group. This is the senior division, the fourth game here of the All-Star Game weekend from Moore Park High School, home of the Musketeers, Mike Carlucci, Toy Cook. Great to have you aboard. And this is, uh, we mentioned, the fourth and final game of the night. AFC going for a clean sweep. They won the first three, 12-6 in the Bantam division. The midget division went uh, to AFC as well, 22-14, and they just won the junior game. Uh, moments ago, 28 to 14. So right now, it's AFC six, NFC nothing, and uh, I've seen some quality players out there and some nice uh, rotations and some nice pass patterns, but just nobody's in sync because of too much turkey and not enough practice together. Not enough practice, too much turkey, mm -hmm. and you know these are all stars, and usually in an all star game, uh, the defenses are going to probably dominate uh, because everyone can get after the ball. A uh, little bit harder to uh, get coordinated on the offensive side, which is why I like to try to keep it simple, right? Mm -hmm. Streaks, hitches, toss. Yeah, just go through the rotation. <laughs> That's stay, right. Stay in formation. <laughs> stick to the program, stick as my the, coach and your coach has always stick told to you. Stick to the program. <laughs> well, here we go. The uh, lucky NFC there. They got that ball. Here's a pitch to number one. But he's got uh, our uh, Hooper and uh, Green all over him. Uh, that was um, Uriah Glenn carrying the ball. We have a new quarterback. It looks like Cody Hoffman is in there playing the QB position for the NFC. They lose yardage. It's going to be second in about 13. Yeah, it looks to me like I don't know, you know, in all-star games, it's really hard to run sideways and, and turn the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think your best bet in these all-star, because everyone's fast, is you got to get up north and south. Uh you're doing yourself no favor running sideways. Sideways doesn't work unless you're a stunt driver in the movie business. Different story, right? And your name is Burt Reynolds. <laughs> That's right. Hooper. <laughs> Hooper. Hooper, yes. Here we go on a third, or second down play. There's a Ooh. throw. Oh, interception. Nobody was there, but guess who was there? That's Tyrell Brown, and he's got running room still on his feet, fighting, and he gets pushed out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Excellent work there. That is Coyote Chapman of the Eastside Lions. We'll have to confer with that. It's number one. There you go. So it looks like Caillou Chapman. Caillou Chapman. It looks like Cody Hoffman overthrew him. Had his receiver open, but uh, over his head. And now the AFC back in business. And he didn't turn the ball over. Yeah, that time. Because that was number 15. That was that mystery player. Maybe that's why he fumbled the ball. He had to get out of here. He, he goes, to go get oh, I'm not on the roster. I better get out of here before the uh... First and ten. Shotgun. A lot of time. Oh, here comes the blitz. He's go. Oh, he gets out. Of the grasps, he's running to the 20, the 15, across to the 12-yard line. And I believe we have Jake Stitch, the coach's right, other son. Right Jake Stitch this time getting out of the blitz there. Two defenders of the NFC were gunning for him. So that will be a... Second, it'll be now second down at about two yards shy. This time, shotgun. Oh, here comes. Nope, gets away. He's got a lot of running room. He's going to toss it up the middle. Oh, he misses his man around the five-yard line. And that was Jake Stitch to Nick Williams. So if Stitch is playing quarterback, so the other number five is Nick Williams. So Nick Williams uh, lost the handle on that. It was deflected. And a nice play. I believe that was Hoffman that deflected it for the... AFC, or uh, beg your pardon, the NFC senior. So now it brings up a third down. That would have been a big play. That would have been on the five-yard line. Well, red zone time here for the AFC. Can they uh, capitalize? Well, it's third down, and I think you have to get the first down right here, obviously. And try to get another four downs uh, before you get in the end zone. They're going heavy in the backfield. Ooh, play action. And that is read nicely by... 
the NFC. A gang of tacklers there. Led by Tonifo Kalfo, who's the... Uh, Father is one of the main, he's the president of the PYFL, made the stop also, Anthony Villa. Anthony Villa with the form tackle. Uh, it looked like he ran into a, a, a wall. In fact, might have lost yardage on that play. So they went from third and two to looks like fourth and four. So Nick Williams, nothing doing this time. Now he has on to his right is Brazen Henderson. Ooh, nice move. And he gets away, and he's going to fake the throw, but he's going to try to get that first down, and he's not going to get close. Or I did don't he know. Get it? I think he, he got it. it. Yep, he did get it. I beg your pardon. I thought he had his foot on the white of the line there before he dove out, and they are going to say... He got it. They're moving forward. Yep, they're and you moving know the chains. So first down, nicely done there. And... What make that play uh, great is, and I tell the story, we were playing the Denver Broncos, and I'm blitzing John Elway. Whenever you're blitzing off the backside, you always have to go to the upfield shoulder to make sure he doesn't spin out, which he just did right there. Break tame and gets the first down. We call that a coach killer. Fourth down, <laughs> get in the first down on the obvious sack. But so, great move. Big fourth down conversion there for the AFC. They're in business here, but this time – Nothing going on there for Floyd Chalk the fourth. Gets stopped by Larry Avila. Big time tackle there, wrestling him down. It'll bring up a second down, and I think they lost eight yards. It'll be second and 11. Yeah, Larry Avila is a, is a beast, number 34. Causing all kind of trouble back there. North Oxnard player, tying his shoe, Actually, getting sh ready. <laughs> Yeah, give me give me a break here. I got to tie my laces. I mean, I think John Wooden would be really upset with that, <laughs> That's right? right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Second and goal. I beg your pardon. I think I said second and eleven. Here's a pitch. A lot of running room on the right side, but that defense it comes up to the challenge. And it's Hoffman in there. Also, uh, Elijah Owens now is playing some defense there for the NFC. That was Chalk the fourth, who had a terrific afternoon. Last Saturday at Moore Park College. We're at Moore Park High School. Beautiful facility, by the way. This is fantastic. This press box is so modern, and we appreciate the support. As we get here as a set here for a third and goal for the AFC, knocking on the door to increase their lead. Which is so funny. We're at Moore Park High School, and I think Moore Park College has to be about 15 miles away. It, it seems like that. It does. You think it would be up a hop, skip, and a jump, but That's it is right. not. It is not a hot skip. <laughs> oh, the defense up to the challenge this time. And that was Jared Giles. So Giles. Eric Williams was, oh, they're going to give it to Williams. I look like Giles to me, but we're kind of just rolling the dice here with the names. We'll stick to uh, either we're familiar with or we'll just throw off the numbers now. Might be the best way, so... Uh, yeah, we can only go based upon the sheets that they have given us, which uh, even the numbers on the sheet, uh, there's a little confusion, but I, but I think that was. I think Jared Giles is number 12, uh, and Eric Williams is number 10, according to our statistician. Uh -oh. Fumble. Uh, costly turnover again by the AFC. So Stitch tried to get it to Chalk. And, again, that seems like it should be a good tandem toy, a good team of exchange, good hands, smart players, but not so smart there. But very lucky again for the, the uh, NFC to take over. Well, I, uh, I, I believe, I mean, you said it. Uh, I think not practicing, not having the ability to, to, to practice and, and get the handoff off calls that fumble. And good job recovering. Well, Gabe Rivera and Tonijo Calfo were on the defensive liner to create havoc there to make that exchange worse than it could have been. And now here we go. Owens going to pitch it out. Right side. Some room. Ooh, big hit right there. And, uh, ooh, and he kept up his, uh, his knees. He kept fighting up there, uh, Roger Craig style, but nothing going on there. And that was... 
Uriah Glenn, the ball carrier. That block was fantastic by Jackson Geyer from Ventura. I think that was Kevin Green. But Green was uh, right there up to the challenge on yeah, his end to yeah, make the stop. Coming up from the free safety with force and fury. Nice job. Trying to keep the uh, AFC in the hole and get that ball back. Two costly turnovers here in the first half. We've got 6.26 to go, folks. And I think, and I think we just got a penalty. It's 6 I, to nothing. I think they had too many men on the field. Of the AFC. Uh-oh. The AFC has been given an infraction here. Too many men on the field. Well, I think it's a little hard to run the ball against 12 guys, if not 13. Yeah, and well, maybe they had both number twos out <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. And both number fours. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably what happened. The coach is going, hey, number four, get out there. Wait a minute. He's already out there. We'll go out there. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah. <laughs> there comes the uh, – The toughest thing to do flight. in all-star games, substitutions. Well, we got one, two receivers to the left, two set to the right, deep and wide. And there's a throw to and a good catch, but not much on the game there. That was Jackson Geyer making the catch on the nice crisp throw by Cody Hoffman. Taj Brown from the West Lancaster Eagles in on the tackle playing left corner. Nice. Good stop. Well, that's your expertise, Toy, the defensive back position, the safety position. So. Give us – anytime you see a play like this, give us that good uh, you know, that good tip next, on the next one because that, that's the key. Uh, some of these D-backs now, they're getting ready for high school. they got to really hone in that position. They're going to be successful. No, I, you're right. And I, and I think a number two – got two number twos on the field right now. One is Jamie Hawkins and the other is Ooh. Kevin Green. Well, we got a new quarterback popping in there. We've got Elijah Owens back – in there for the NFC. He was switching off with Hoffman. So Owen's back. But did you see the pressure by the big fella, number 44, Stitch? He he's, was, he's a player. I mean. Chad Stitch? Yeah, he was coming through. And I think uh, Owens uh, was feeling the pressure, and he threw that ball. He, he threw it too soon. Well, this is the big third down because I don't think they're going to – this is two down territory, which it would have been earlier with the other teams. But it's probably going to be a pass. Uh -oh. oh, lost the grab. There's Stitch on him, and Stitch has been getting through that line. Right now, defensively, I would say the pressure by Chad Stitch has been pretty good. He's thrown Owens out of his ball game. He Stitch is all over the place. Um, you got to watch number 44 in the middle. Yeah, look out for this other guy. He's kind of a silent player, uh, Taj Brown, West Lancaster Eagles. I remember him last year. He had some big tackles and some big picks. Taj Brown's out there for the AFC. I'm expecting him to make a big play. He's covering their big receiver. They're wide out to the right for the NFC here on a third down play. Got to get to the 35 to get that first. I'm sorry, this is fourth down, so they are punting. I beg your pardon. The, flat, the guy at the, the – um, but the chains over there had the third number on there. So oh, there now he's got the fourth down there. So nonetheless, a little chub punt, and they'll go around the 49-yard line. That's a good spot right there. This might get them. This might get them back in gear. So the AFC once again, see if they can get something going uh, positively. They they get they get a decent drive going, some good plays, and then they end up a costly turnover, and then maybe they can uh, avoid this. They this can. Time. They can. Well, I know that that was a, a pretty good spot uh, at the 50. And right now, it seems like the uh, AFC has had the field position. Uh, they haven't been able to capitalize like when they were down here in the red zone. Uh, but and they had that good run there um, by Hooper on the uh, interception. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, Green on the interception. On the, the ball got brought back. Got Remember it brought back. That's right. That was their, that but they was, didn't capitalize. Yep. First and ten. Throw it to the flat. Ooh. Ball is thrown hard to Ho Hooper, and it is incomplete. Brings up a second down. Chad Stitch back there blocking for him, but ball was a, a hot potato there. He threw the ball like a baseball player throwing it home from right field. Oh, yeah, that, that definitely had some heat on it. Or as Jake Downing likes to say, mustard. <laughs> the mustard towel on the <laughs> field. We'll call the penalty flags now. Then The mustard towel is on the field, but... Yeah, the the steel curtain, the terrible towel. I guess it would. That is a terrible. That towel. is a terrible <laughs> towel. Yeah, for a lot. Hot team right now though, eight and two. 
They were kind of like not looking good those first two, three games, and the Steelers now playing some great ball. Playing some great ball. Le'Veon Bell's getting in shape. And this time he tries it again. He slows the pass. Uh, the, he slows the uh, pace of the ball there in the heat, and it's caught by Chapman. Is that Kau Chapman? Is that how you pronounce it? Kau. 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 What a great name. Kau Chapman. But he only gets a yard out of the play. Actually, he gets no gain. So it'll be third down here coming up for the AFC. Right now, their offense has been stalling. Yeah, I think Kau Chip, Kau Chapman would be C squared. Two double C. Double C, we'll do that. C squared. CC Company. Yeah, CC <laughs> Music Factory. CC Company. <laughs> Joe Namath, was that the movie he was in back in the 70s? I think it was. Yeah, C.C. C. C. Ryder, yeah, C.C. Yeah, C. C. and Company. Yeah. That was the name of the film. Okay, running across then. Uh -oh. Oh, and there's a nice play. There he goes, Kevin Green. He gets three or four yards on that little sneaky play. On the exchange, and we have a new quarterback. I think Chuck the fourth is now playing quarterback. And I think Noel Manalo. Camarillo. Yeah, Camarillo. No, Manalo with a nice tackle. Open field. Manalo is Aloha. Oh, good to have a Hawaiian ball player here in the All Star game out of Camarillo High School. Getting set to go to Camarillo High School, but playing for the Camarillo PYFL team. So now we have a third down with less than three minutes to go here in the first half. 6 0 AFC. Uh oh. Oh, he gets away. How did he get away? My goodness. There was two guys that had him. Someone's got butter around their arms and hands today because that was amazing. That was Jake Stitch back at the quarterback position getting away. But they didn't get enough. Uh, he didn't get a, enough to get that first down. But he had a little room on that right side. He was looking for a couple blockers there. It looks like they're doing the, the wholesale defensive change. It is so our was, ball. The John F. Kennedy way. It's our ball. We're yeah, taking over. That's right. Why? Because it's our ball. That's it's why. It's our ball. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> so the NFC back in gear. They're just uh, holding up. AFC just can't get any to any rhythm going at all every time they have the ball. But they do lead 6 to nothing. Oh, and here's a little throwing ball in the flat. They're saying that is, nope, that's incomplete. And the attended receiver was Darius James on the toss from Owens. Brings up a second down. And uh, once again, Kevin Green in the backfield. Well, you know, the ball's a little bit throw. But I think if, if, Darius, if you asked Darius James if he should have caught that ball, he would agree. Uh, not at the easiest catch, but he is an all-star, and he needs to make that catch. Uh, tough catch, but got to make it. And Caillou Chapman right there. Just in case if Green didn't get to him, to put some pressure. Now he's going to guard the wide out here near the sideline around the 42. And here's a pitch around the end. Ooh. Nice running room if he can get through that oh. one. Crosses midfield, crossing inside, getting close to a first down, maybe a yard shy. Nice run. And that was Darius James for North Oxnar, doing a great job following his blockers. That's a smart runner. That was a smart runner. And, and I said earlier, it's tough to turn the corner, but he was able – he got a couple good blocks on the edge, allowed him – and he turned it upfield. Looks like Jared Giles made the uh, tackle that time. And a little bit of the help from Caden Stowe helping out defensively. So here come the AFC. Trying to get something going here before the end of the first half. And there's... Uh, He's still going. And he... Uh, no whistle. Oh, they call it. It looks like Dominic Cannon stopped him. And that was timeout. Anthony Villa, the ball carrier for the NFCs. So a timeout here. We have a minute 20 to go. It's been an entertaining first half because it's been like a free-for-all, almost like a rugby match, Toy. I mean, yeah. I, I like rugby. I know you like rugby, too. This is how it's kind of been, in a sense. But, it's, but the AFC just can't get any rhythm going, even though they lead 6 to nothing. Well, and, you know, despite being down 6 to 0, the AFC uh, – and the NFC, someone is going to have to make a play. I mean, it's fourth and two, and the question is, you know, do you go for it or do you punt it? And I think they're going to go for it.
Well, we'll see what, uh, after the, the first half, when they get set for the second half, what kind of strategy uh, head coach John Stitch of the AFC will put together and head coach Chris Wus uh, Russell will put together for the NFC because, uh, you know, you, know, you want to play the game the right way, but you want to have fun. Nobody needs to get hurt. This is an all-star game. It's uh, a chance to show off your ability, your athleticism. Uh, I mean, these guys are getting ready to uh, get, you know, get set for high school. Uh, next fall, they're in. Freshmen, some of them will be playing freshmen, sophomore, summer. We'll be going right to varsity. So, oh, little false start there. Uh, it could be. Is that a fault? No, it's going to be encroachment on the defense. So, uh, a sparkling uh, note there for the NFC. It'll be first and five. Which I think that might be the second encroachment foul that they've caused the NFC. Uh, a minute 20, got to take advantage. Somehow get some points on the board before halftime. It would be a big plus for the NFC to take advantage of this. They got, they've got plenty of time. They've got the weapons. They've got the athletic and the rhythm here from their uh, offense. Chris Russell has uh, some good offensive coordinators working with him. One of them, his name escapes me, but he's uh, one of the coaches for the North Oxnard team. Here we go. Shotgun. Quick Ooh. throw. Oh, he had his man there. It'll tip off the old fingers. Quick flip indeed. So Owens. And it looks like Chalk made the stop, and it's good that he was on his man because a catch, if it was caught, may have been a chance for a first down, and they might have run out of bounds to kill the clock. So that pass was attended for Anthony Villa. He had his hand on it. Tough coverage, though. Tough not not a lot of space in that window. Put it where only his man could catch it. And uh, good coverage by Floyd Chalk, the fourth. Looks like Tapia is wide left there for the NFC. Shotgun. Uh -oh. You better throw it quick or get away. Oh, he gets away. And he's going to go left side. He's across the 40. He's looking for some Ooh. room. He's going to go <laughs> pound head first. He's a man. He went right into Chalk and Green. He says, I'm coming at you, pal. He, he did. He did. <laughs> There was a lot of physicality on that play. <laughs> I was playing. amazed. Pardon? No, I was amazed he got away. <laughs> you know? That had turnover written all over it. The blitz from the blind side toy was coming, and he was just about, about an inch away from getting hit pretty hard. From giving it up. So, like you said, a possible turnover there, but uh, he's, uh, he's like a magician right now. Owens, and he got away, and his speed and his athleticism, and he's got good vision toward the field. But when you got three big ball players for the AFC gunning for you, there's only one thing. Either you drop down on the ground or you just go ahead first, which you did, but they stopped him like a wall chalk and green. That's a good tandem there defensively. So about a minute and a tick left here in the first half. We've seen some fun plays here. It's 6 nothing, even though the NFC is outplaying the AFC, but the AFC has the lead. They're hanging in there. I mean, the, the NFC is only one play away from making this game. I don't. I don't even believe that the NFC in all three previous games has has even led. Well, it's an AFC show here today, and they're showcase. Going for, yeah, showcase indeed, and they're going for the sweep here. But there is uh, plenty of time. We got a lot of football left, and the NFC is only down by six. Two-step drop, got good him. throw. He's got his man. Is he going to catch it? He does it at the 10. He's going to try to get in the end zone. He does. What a play. That's a 43-yard touchdown. What a throw. What a catch. Cody Hoffman from Elijah Owens. Wow. You just you said it, Toy. He says they're one big player getting on the scoreboard here and getting back in it. 6-6 six, six is the score. I would throw that play four times a game. <laughs> Well, Jump ball, good good position by the defensive back. I mean, he was there. You just got to make the play. He didn't. Cody Hoffman went up, aggressively took the ball, and scored. And this is something that they needed, that the NFC needed. So yeah. it was a, like you said, the height, height matters on that one. He was able to get up there. And now the extra point to take the lead. This could be the first lead, as Toy mentioned, here for the NFC. Looks like a decent snap and a decent hold, and it is good. It is good. 
And there you go. A minute to go here. 53 seconds. Time out in the field. 7-6. The NFC. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> That was exciting. We, you know, we needed that because it's been kind of a little bit. Everybody's filling each other out. There's a few miscues. Not really mistakes because, like I said, they haven't any practice. They don't, they're just learning uh, each other's habits. But that was a nice big play to get us out of the first half. These are all stars. And, and I've always said if it all goes bad, just throw the ball up down the sideline and let your playmakers make plays. And that's mm -hmm. what happened on that last play for a touchdown. 43-yard TD pass. Owens to Hoffman. And the extra point, good. And I believe their kicker is a soccer, uh, Pedro Beltran, Beltran uh, from Oxnard. He's their kicker. He did a fantastic job. They're getting that extra point and getting the NFC the one-point edge here. 53 ticks to go, first half. Crowd is into it, though. All-star games are always a lot of fun, all the parents and the friends of the family. And, of course, it's being a holiday weekend, so a lot of the uh, maybe grandpa and uncle so-and-so is here and watching, uh, you know, their, their nephew and grandson. So it's always a fun festive occasion. Well, you know, this is, you know, for a lot of these kids and, until, you know, next year, this is the last time they'll be playing football because uh, now it's time to go into basketball season. So this is the last weekend for them. That doesn't go in. Oh, you better come out. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Chalk the fourth. <laughs> so, chalk the fourth. Get the ball at the 20 or 25. You mentioned, Toy, yeah, they're getting set for basketball. And some, of course, baseball and track. And there's a lot of track stars here that um, we might even see uh, in some big indoor meets in their high school careers. I hope and pray that they do play another sport. I'm a big proponent. Obviously, I played two sports at Stanford, mm -hmm. and I played three sports. We all played multiple sports in high school, and I, right. I actually believe that it makes you a better player uh, when you play multiple sports. It mm -hmm. uh, gives your body an opportunity to rest. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would wish that more parents would allow their kids to play multiple sports. And coaches, that's part of the problem, too. Well, of course, and, and like you said, if you play multiple sports, and you always pick up small little things of each sport that helps you in the other sport, which is uh, a very good no, attribute. No, no question that playing outfield uh, in baseball helped me as a corner, mm -hmm. you know, when the ball was up in the air. Uh, and Deion Sanders, I thought, was a fantastic defensive back because he was an outfielder. Mm -hmm. uh, and we always said that if, you know, I was coaching DBs, I'd make them go shag fly balls. Uh, because even though I went to Stanford and was supposed to be smart, uh, I didn't understand physics. But when the ball was in the air, I had a good idea where it was going to land. Let me ask you this real quick before the NFC gets to the line. Who is the toughest receiver that you – play defense against it, it was actually a guy named fred barnett out of the philadelphia eagles Philly. who mm -hmm. didn't run conventional routes tall yeah tall like a, tall and like gangly a and basketball unorthodox yeah he looked like a big basketball player yeah if he's unorthodox that throws you out of your rhythm throws right? me out of my rhythm yeah oh here's uh, uh -oh. Ooh, some good moves by hooper it's got to be malachi hooper this time and trying to slash his way in and out across the 20 gets to the to the 22 or 23 yard line. That tackle was made. I, by saw, I saw Cody Hoffman, number five, in there. Russell, Russell making the uh, tackle there for the NFC. And Hoffman, Hoffman helping out on the tackle. And they're just trying to run the, some plays here, get out of the uh, first half trail only by a point. Trying to make it mistake free. Don't want to cough anything up here and then give the. NFC seniors a chance to get some more points going into the locker room. NFC's hyped now. They're feeling good about themselves from that nice drive they had there. They, uh, Owens to Hoffman, 43-yarder. Touchdown variety to get them the lead, 7-6. to six. And that's where we stand right now with 12 seconds to go. Time for one more play. Barking out the calls. That's Green. He's being chased. He gets away. He gets spinned around in those big, brawling, big buffet eater defense of the NFC's. <laughs> <laughs> pull, him, pull him down, and we've got the first half in the book. So NFC hot and heavy there on that last play. And, of course, the last four minutes of the second quarter, they got uh, they were able to produce that touchdown to uh, knock down the AFC, who had the lead going in, even though they were playing a lot, kind of a, a full mistake uh, variety of football there. So one half in the books here, folks. Good game. 
fun to watch. All-Stars, the senior All-Stars here, the PYFL All-Star Weekend from Moore Park High School. One half in the books, and we'll take a break here. It's the NFC Seniors 7, the AFC Seniors 6. I'm Mike Carlucci alongside Toy Cook. Back with the second half in a moment. <laughs> 